Welcome to Buckets. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network, joined by Joe Delera. He is an NBA writer for us over at the Action Network. Joe, how you doing? We're doing all right, Matt. You know, it's, it's been a little bit crazy trying to get a hold of these lines here, but we're having a good time with the trade deadline. But uh, it should be yeah, good. some action tonight uh, on that front. Russell Westbrook traded by the Los Angeles Lakers to the Utah Jazz, who will not be playing him. He will be bought out. Uh, D'Angelo Russell goes to the Lakers along with Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. And uh, along with some other players that, that have moved around. <laughs> Kendrick Williams is involved in the deal. Uh, Mike Toscano Conley. Anderson. Is yeah, involved. Toscano Anderson goes to the Wolves. Mike Conley goes to the Wolves. Um, we'll have a, we'll have a, a podcast that kind of reviews our trade deadline outcomes tomorrow. I want to see what the big picture is. In the meantime, you can catch my reactions uh, in written form over in the Action Network app. This, on the other hand, is your Thursday Best Bets episode. Now, there are it's a limited slate on Thursday. There's just four games. And because there's so much potential trade movement, the books have been very careful about posting lines for this we've only got two lines up and we had to wait quite a while on those we've got no line on denver orlando we've got no line on chicago brooklyn uh brooklyn obviously still pursuing trades chicago still pursuing trades uh orlando still pursuing trades i would be surprised if denver did anything um what's interesting though is phoenix and atlanta are two teams that i wouldn't be shocked if made deals and they are on the board uh, Hawks are four and a half point favorite totals 229 and then the late game the milwaukee bucks are taking on the los angeles lakers uh, minus five and a half in LA totals 239 and Joe and I are in agreement. So Joe, give the people our best bet for Thursday. So we both like the Milwaukee bucks minus five and a half here. I think it's the line just doesn't, I'm surprised by this line, honestly, because we know that the bucks are not trading any of their big real, essentially big four players. Um, they're not really trading anybody in the starting lineup where you have the Lakers coming off a really big, like emotional game that they still lost to the Thunder, but LeBron set, you know, past Kareem. Uh, you're looking at this situation where they're going to be without a lot of their depth. They traded Russell Westbrook. Their D'Angelo Russell's not going to play. Malik Beasley's not going to play. Jarrett Vanderbilt's not going to play. We're looking at this team that's just like a shell. They're going to be really, really stretched pretty thin here. And this is Milwaukee is just too tough of a task for a Lakers team that kind of needs to get out in transition. And Milwaukee is able to defend that with the length versatility that they have with basically their entire starting lineup. So I think the five and a half short, um, I think it maybe is trying to capitalize a little bit on, you know, LeBron public money essentially. And, you know, the news of this trade without people realizing like, Oh yeah, wait, those, those guys aren't going to play today. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. This line's weird. Um, I, I say that, and yet here, look, I I understand actually a little bit why this is short. Um, my power rating actually makes this significantly less than five. Like I've actually got this power rated for full season performance. Um, I've got this. You're gonna laugh. I've got the Lakers as favorites here. No way. <laughs> Based off of the full because the Bucks were so bad at offense That's for like true. three months of the season. That's right. True. And and yeah. that was the thing. And that was why actually for about two months of the season, it was really profitable fading Milwaukee. But that time is over now. And so, like, yeah, I can't I can't capture what they've been over the last three weeks, but they've been absolute monsters. They're shooting the lights out from three. The offense has kicked up a gear, and Giannis is absolutely unstoppable. The other reason that I like the Bucks in this spot is my favorite trend of the season. Guess who the Los Angeles Lakers played when that not that anyone would have noticed, even though they actually won the game when LeBron broke the record. Uh, and that game on Tuesday. They played the Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh, this trend. <laughs> Teams after playing the Thunder this season are 16, 32, and 4 against the spread. 33%. They are 33% against the spread, including they have lost against the spread in their last, uh, let's see here, 7 of 9 is the last that is, is a record insane. in their last that is, it's that's the craziest trend. <laughs> it's really wild. Um, and it's been consistent across seasons too. Um, yeah. after you play the Thunder, they're just a pain in the ass. And I think it takes something out of you. And yeah. it's actually, I think, a letdown spot for the Lakers after the emotions of that game on Tuesday. Like that was such a big atmosphere for a team that honestly has a lot of guys oh. that aren't made for that kind of atmosphere, and it showed. And yes. 
I think their spirits will be buoyed by having, you know, like, hey, help is on the way. But like, look, <laughs> Russell Westbrook had a positive net rating when he was coming off yeah. the bench. Like his bench minutes were good. Yeah. And so even with having Davis and LeBron, they're going to be extremely shorthanded here. Um, they're not going to have, I mean, they're not extremely shorthanded, but they're going to be a little shorthanded. It's and so the yeah, with these kind of guys, and then you've got to kind of factor in that. Um, now, look, I think one of the concerns is that the t- the Bucks under, Bu- under Bud have not been great on the road versus Western conference teams. Like that's been a, a problem for them. Um, yeah. This season they're four, three and one, which is pretty good. But if you go back to like, uh, if you go back to the, when Bud took over the team back in 2018, 19, they're only 45% against the spread. Now they're usually much bigger favorites though, is also part of this thing. So yeah. that's, that's part of the equation as well, but I'm with I, you. Uh, I also lean toward the under in this game, just because, you know, the Lakers offense has been, some of this is like a little bit skewed because Lakers defense was really good early and the Bucks offense was horrible, but yeah. I still show a little bit of an edge on this just based off of kind of, um, I think that the number is still a little bit high. Like you're still talking about two thirty nine. Yeah. Maybe a Lakers team total under is maybe the better. Yeah. Way to Cause I was going to say, I think if, if we think that the spread is like a little short, um, just based on like our capping of it, then the Lakers team total under makes sense, especially with Westbrook getting traded that should really affect their pace. I think with those bench minutes, um, because he's like a guy that really likes to push. So I think, and like, I kind of want to stay away from like a full game under specifically because those lineups with drew Chris and, uh, and Giannis have actually been very good, like offensively. So, um, like they're scoring in small sample size with 206 possessions. As long as those three are on the court, they're scoring 122.8 points for hundred possessions. So, like that, that kind of lineup is cooking. So I think that the Lakers team total under might make a little bit more sense with Westbrook not in to push the pace up. 